Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the series called Rebuilding Your Team as we are focusing in the new Premier League Rich team in Newcastle. This team got bought by some loaded owners. So with this, we are not focusing on the finances. We simply don't care. As with the Barca and Manu rebuilds. But I know that financially we can sign Mbappé, Haaland, De Bruyne and whoever we want. But as we saw this transfer window, they can't bring top, top players because who wants to play for Newcastle, right? The best shot of good signings for this team is like outside of the top leagues for players that are not ready enough to get the huge leap, like Bruno Guimaraes. So we have to keep it as realistic as possible, even if we won't count finances, because we know we have unlimited money. As always, all the prices are from transfer market, the contracts are from spot track, and the starts are from F-Breath. As you can see, I decided to adapt the format I use in the American sports by having a five-step off-season plan. So the first step will be to buy a left back or left wing back. As Newcastle already got Matt Target alone, but there is no option to buy and Villa could use him next year. So we need someone there as Jamal Lewis is simply not good enough. The second one will be to improve the midfield as this is the weak spot of this team. And there's no one to generate some gain. The, yes, we signed Bruno Guimaraes. That is a junk, but it's defensive midfielder. We need some guys around that can generate options for our front three. We also need to get a right winger, as Maximin is by far our best player, but he, I'd rather have him on the left side where he performed better. And after signing Chris Wood, we only need someone in the right to help them. And Almiron is not so great wide open, we need him in the center. The fourth one will be to replace Fabian Schaar, as he has been a long time with us, but with our new backline being a four-man back, he's not the best like that, and his contract is expiring, so we will let him walk. And finally, we need to stay in the Premier League. This video is assuming Newcastle does stay up this season, as they should because they have the same, the better team, and we have to do the same thing for another year and stay in the Premier League. That's the main goal. As I said with the plan, Fabian Schar is out for free, and so is Matty Longstaff, with both contracts ending this summer. We're also selling Clark, Dumet and Manquillo for less than 10 million combined, and the two big sales are John Josh Shelby for 11 million and Joelinton for 17 million. All these sales plus the wages give us around 58 million to work with. Now what everyone has been waiting for, the people who are buying. As we let Matt Target go, we're going for Bedford FC's left back Rico Henry. He has 2 goals and 0.6 expected assists in 19 matches. He has an 83.6 pass completion in short passing, 76% in middle passing and 50% in long passing. The important thing is he has a 1.4 shot creating action per 90 minutes. He may not be the best tackler versus the dribble as he has only 23.5 effectiveness, but he is great at pressuring opponents, being successful at a 33.2% rate, and that for a defender is a lot. He also has 3. 4, 2.04 sorry, tackles plus interceptions per 90 minutes, so he can defend. We are paying Brentford 17.5 17 million and we are getting him for the next 5 years. For our second signing we are staying in our back line as we are going for this January's Newcastle target Sven Botman. He wanted to finish the season in France but he was open to the move. So we are back at it in the off season. He can pass from the back as he has a 94% completion in short passing, 93 in medium and 78 in long passing. Even as a central defender he has a .67 shot creating actions per 90, so he can play build up and has a great possession of the football. He's a great tackle versus the dribble at 50% effectiveness and has 3.33 tackles plus interceptions per 90. Even if his team is not in first place as last year, he has improved a lot. We are beating Milan's offer and getting him for 35 million. This will be the only signing from a big team, as we are getting young American star Weston McKinney. He has been rumored with a lot of clubs as you want to start a rebuild and want to get out of death, so we are going after him. He's their prototypical box to box midfielder, he does it all. This year he has 4 goals in 3.1 expected goals, so he can finish, and 2.1 expected assists in all competitions. He's a great passer with 81% in short, 76 in middle, and 72 in long passing. But the big one is he has 2.05 short creating actions per night. He has a 50% dribbling rate and a 51% aerial success. 
he's not the best tackler, but he's great in the positions, and he has 22 interceptions, and that gives him 3.4 tackles plus interceptions per night. We're paying 28 million to the Juve to get him, and as Juve needs the money, we they will accept it. Also, he can make us that quality leap in the midfield that we're looking after. Our big, biggest signing of the season is next. We're going after Leicester's attacking mid in James Madison. He has been rumored to want out of the Foxes for a while, so we're jumping at this chance. He has 6 goals and 2.7 expected assists in the Premier League this season. He's a great passer as he has 87% in short passing and 83 in the middle. The long ones he does struggle at 47, but this is only year as he has never been under 50% except this year. He has 3.62 shot grade actions per 90 and this is under his career average of almost 5. So even in a down year he can give us a lot of opportunity to score and we need it. He did increase his goal creating actions per 90 at 0.81. We don't care how he defends because he will be our main creative player and we only need him to pressure when he has a 25% effectiveness and that's not bad at all. That's only because Rogers hasn't been using him as a number 10 so he hasn't pressured that much. We we're paying 58 million for to bring him to the north of the country and play for us. As I said when I did the offseason plan, we need a winger to help Alan and Maximin and Wood or Wilson, whoever would play on top. So we're going for Ajax, young star, Anthony. He's ready for a prime job, but not a big six job. So we're signing him this year. Between the Eredivisie and Champions League, he has 9 goals and 4.2 expected assists. He has an 87 pass completion in the short pass, 80 in the middle ones, and 55 in the long one. He's a great passer with 5.03 shot creating actions per 90. This only in the Champions League, as Everett does not offer this stat for every device games. The big things he does, he dribbles, and he dribbles a lot and effectively, with a 63% success rate. He leads the area device in progressive carries per 90, with 11.8 per 90, and that's huge. As I said defensively, I only care about how he pressures, and he has a 24.5% success rate. Only the Champions League, again. We're getting him for the next 5 years, and a signing fee of 40 million. Our final signing comes in the way of another winger. In Watford, it's my last star. We need someone to rotate with Anthony and even with St. Maximian as he can play both wings. So if we're not, not relegated, Watford sure leads. So we're getting him for only 30 million. This year in the Premier, he has 5 goals in 3.3 expected goals and a 2.5 expected assists. He has 2.18 shot creating actions per 90, even if he's not the best passer at 77 short, 73 medium, and 60% completion rate in the long pass. He's an excellent dribbler having a 57 effective rate and has 6.9 progressive carries per 90. He does not have the best pressure numbers because, well, Watford doesn't do that. Now for our lineup, we're playing a basic 4-3-3. We have Dubravka, starting goalkeeper, and Darlow. That is a great backup, in my opinion. Our backline will have Henry, Byrne, Bodman, and Trippier to start, with Luis, Fernandez, Lascelles, and Kraft to back up from left to right. Our midfield has Gimai Rice and Hayden as central defensive midfielders, with McKinney and Madison to start in front of them. We also have Willock and Almiron to back them up. As you can see, we are now more creative even with our bench, so there's a lot of opportunities we can create. Finally, we have front three of Alan and Maximan, Anthony and Callum Wilson. But as he's always injured, we will have Chris Wood as our backup, and Sarr and Fraser on the wings. This team should comfortably stay in the Premier League and be around that 15 to 10 spot. Now, as we head to our second season, we will have a new plan. We have to be in the top 12 of the league, that's why we still have some moves to make. The first one will be to get a striker. The piece missing is a good number 9. Now we have a midfield that generates a lot of chances, so we need a guy that can score at around 15 to 20 goals a season. The second one will be to get a center back. We need someone next to Botman that is young, so we will sign one this year. Renew Danberg. After signing him in the middle of the 2022 season, they gave him a short contract, but we're getting him back for as a backup or as a, even as a third central defender. The next stop will be to get another running back. We're letting Kraft go for free, so we need someone there. Preferably someone young, so Tripper can start for one year more. 
and our final step will be to stay around mid mid table. This team plus the slight improvements we are making for this year should be around that 13, 14 spot, all up to the eight spot. We are not going to be a new European team by any means this year, but we can be around that top half of the table. As I said in the plan, we're letting Kraft go as his contract ends and we plan to improve the position. We're also selling Yamala sales for 5 million and Wilson for 28 million. We are ready to make a leap and these two bring some money to us. I know Wilson is better than Wood, but Wilson would not be a backup. Wood can be that backup number 9. Now for our first signing, I know I said I wanted a backup role right back, but as I was looking at the options I saw that Leicester's right back James Justin is entering the last year of his contract. So we're paying them 35 million and getting him for 4 years. In the 2021 Premier League season he only played, he has only played 2 games until this point. So we're focusing on the 2021, where he played 23, he had 2 goals and 1.2 expected assists. He's a great passer with an 89% percentage in the short ones. 83 in the middle ones and 48 in the long ones. He has 2 shot creating actions per 90 and almost 5 progressive carries per 90 at 4.91. He's a solid tackler with a 40% effective rate. And he also has 3.8 tackles plus interceptions per 90. So he's not the best defensively but he's not bad at all. Our next signing will be Maxence Lacroix from Wolfsburg. He's great on ball as he completes 85% of his short passing, 89% of the middle ones and 70 of the long ones. So between him and Botman, we can really play some possession football. They are not, of course, a Pep Guardiola kind of guys, but they will do the work perfectly fine. Of course, what matters the most in a centre-back is defensively how good they are. Where he has a 66% tackle success rate, he has 6.6 .6 tackle plus interceptions per 90 and leads the Bundesliga in intercepted passes by a defender. He's also a threat on the air as he wins 2 out of 3 aerial duels at 66% of course. So he will be a great signing and cost around 42 million. And finally our final signing will be our bomb, our number 9. The league won second place in goals and Canada's hope, Jonathan David. He has been tearing up League 1 in the last two seasons, but we are focusing on stats of this year alone. He has 12 goals in 9.7 expected goals, while also contributing on the team with 3.1 expected assists. He is not a bad passer, having an 83% in the short pass, 80 in the middle ones and 78 in the long pass. He also has 2.26 short grading actions, even if he doesn't dribble that much, but he has a good rate of 60%. So if he tried it much, he will be more successful but with less effectiveness. We are bringing him to, us, to be our starting no number 9 for a lot of money, at 75 million to be exact. In 2022 season we didn't need to renew any contract, but as I said we need to keep Dan Byrne on the team, even if it is as a backup. He just arrived on the deadline day of the 22 window, so we are keeping him around for 3 more years and for a little bit over 1 million a year. For the lineup, we will keep the same 4 3 3 as the broadcast to our goalkeeper. Our defense got younger, faster, and more technical on ball, with Henry, Lacroix, Bodman, and James Justin from left to right. Our midfield still has Guimarães, McKinney, and Madison, and our front three has Allens and Maximan, Anthony, with Sa rotating, plus our new Canadian number 9, Jonathan David, up top. This lineup looks great. It's young, physical, and also technical and can help compete. They all fit our playing style and I think we can be around that mid-table that we targeted at the beginning of the season. Now as we head for our final season of the video we're going all in to get at least to the conference league or even more. For this we don't have much, our squad looks great but we still have some tweaks to make. First we're going to sign a new manager. Eddie Howe can take us up to some point but moving forward we need someone else. The manager's market moves a lot, so I will be making kind of a bold prediction to our hire. We also need to buy a new goalkeeper as Dubravka is getting older and is not good enough for champ for conference league, sorry. We also need to extend Wood. Is Wood a good striker? No. Is he bad? Also no. So we're going to extend him on a short deal as he can be our backup striker or can come in late in games as we overload the box. 
as I said, we're buying a new goalkeeper, so we need to let at least one of our goalkeepers go, as we can't have t three goalkeepers that are at least championship level. And finally, get into European tournaments. As I said, this is the year we make the leap. This will be the main focus, and this is why we're making some, move some moves, even as our team continues to develop. As we head to our transfers, as I said, one goalkeeper must go, and that will be Darlow. Dubravka is a club idol. He can stay as a backup goalkeeper to the one we're bringing on. This is the only cell we're having as the team looks in a great shape. Now, for our manager, as I said, how is out. And Leicester recent struggles and injuries, we're saying that Brendan Rogers won't stay on the job that much longer. We'll know how good he is, but he has been choking that top four spot for a long time. We can take him to us and he will make us get to that next level we want. At Leicester, he has averaged 1.72 points per match. In Celtic, he had 2.24, and before in Liverpool, he had 1.77. At Leicester, he pays an average 2.4 million per win. All this being a player first manager. It is impossible seeing him criticize a player with the media or outside of the locker room, and every player loves him, or almost every. Finally, our only goalkeeper. We're going for the future of England, Dean Henderson. I know in the Man U video I kept him in the last season to be our starter, but I expect they have to still be a top goalkeeper in 2024, so they might decide going with him. Dean is about to enter the final year of his contract, so we're getting him for 35 million. We're looking at a combine of 19 and 20 for his stats, because he was a starter for Sheffield and in the second one he played 12 games with Manu. In those two seasons he has allowed 45 goals in 50.5 post-shot expected goals, giving him a plus 5.5, so he has saved more than he should have, to summarize. The issue with him is he does not come out to cut crosses, and he could improve in that a lot. If he started doing that, he will, he will be a great goalkeeper, a top 5 in the world easily. He was linked on loan with Newcastle this, summer, this winter, sorry, so maybe he could consider getting a permanent move if we get better. He's the future of England, and now he will be our future. He will help us make that leap to the European football. As I said, we need to renew Wood as a backup man for 2 more years and 2.5 million each. We're also bringing back Federico Fernandez for one more year and three million, so he can be still that lock locker room leader that we need. As now we have Rogers, we're changing to a 4-2-3-1, as he simply loves that formation and is the one that uses the most in Leicester when everyone's healthy. We have Dean to start as goalkeeper. Our defense stays the same with Henry, Lacrosse, Bodman, and James. Our two central midfielders will be Bruno Guimaraes, paired up with Weston McKinney. Our wingers will be Anthony and San Maximan, and we will have Madison as number 10 behind Jonathan David. Now, this team feels like one of the best outside of the big six. We should be getting fight for those European competitions, and maybe even win one of those cups. Brendan gives us those, that European experience and will help our young stars develop, and also get motivated by a veteran presence that knows how to win. Well, there you have it, guys, my Newcastle reveal plan. This was too different as we're not focusing on finances as much with Manu at Barca because of the new owners. While this is not your prototypical sleeping giant, this team had some success and may want to recover it. As always, let me know what you think about the team and what team would you like next. Thanks for watching and see you next time.